Hey guys, welcome back to Whiskey on the West Coast. My name is Matt, and if you click this video, you know exactly what we're talking about today. We're gonna to be talking about Springbank 10 year olds and alternatives, uh, possible replacements for the irreplaceable. Springbank 10 single malt Scotch whiskey from Campbelltown. You can see my bottles in some tatters here. This bottle went through the fire I've talked about uh, a few times. Uh, if you've checked out previous videos, if not, the label's damaged, the whiskey's still good, and that's all that matters. Spring Bank 10, Spring Bank anything, really hard to find. Uh, it's selling out immediately in the UK, it's selling out immediately here in Canada. Uh, it is a real chore to, and a hassle to get your hands on it. I managed to just get one bottle of Spring Bank 10 all of 2022, nothing else. Uh, I, I nearly got shut out, and a lot of other people are suffering the same fate. It's going to auction. It's going up in price, and um, what's a whiskey lover to do? Well, we trudge on. We look for replacements. We look for stand-ins. Again, you can't replace the the wonder that is Springbank 10, but you can find mm, some good substitutes. So today we're going to list some of the best substitutes for Springbank 10 uh, for those moments when you either want to be precious with it and save it for another time to share with other people, or if you just don't have a bottle at all. All right, let's get to the list. All right, real quickly before we get into the list, just a little bit about Springbank if you haven't had it before. Uh, Cameltown uh, Distillery, single malt scotch whiskey. It is uh, funky, it is minerally, uh, it's got some salt to it, uh, a lot of fruits. Uh, it's got this like sort of oily um, industrial note to it. Really distinctive whiskey, hard to replicate hard to replace. Uh, I poured Springbank 10. If I'm talking about Springbank, it's what I want to be drinking. All right, so that's just a little primer on uh, Springbank 10 and the flavor profile if you haven't had it yet. Let's get to the list. First on our list of possible uh, alternatives to Springbank 10 is gonna be a whiskey I've talked about before. It's Ben Romick 10. Uh, ben Romick has often been considered or called, nicknamed, the Springbank of Speyside. Uh, it is a very expressive malt. It is moderately to lightly peated, much like Springbank. Springbank's rocking about 10 ppm's. Uh, ben Romick uh, is typically uh, 12 ppm's. Similar cast makeup too. You got 40% ex bourbon over here with the, um, sorry, 60% ex bourbon with the Springbank, 40% sherry. Over here with Ben Romick, you're looking at 80% ex bourbon, 20% ex sherry, uh, with a one year Oloroso uh, marriage. Again, similar cast makeup. 46% ABV. Unfortunately, the Ben Romick's coming in at 43% ABV. It's natural color, but it is chill filtered. So it's got those two strikes against it. However, the flavor profile is really similar. Um, it is really uh, fruit and malt forward, it's got that moderate peat. Uh, it does have a kind of its own funk to it and its own um, industrial sort of note, much like Springbank and the Campbelltown funk. It's different, but it's still funky. Uh, on top of this, it's made in a lot of the same ways as Springbank. It's a small family run operation from Gordon McPhail. It's uh, using uh, some older equipment and it is made in very small amounts. Uh, actually, they make less Ben Romick every year than they do Springbank. Um, so uh, a lot of similarities. Um, long fermentations too. There is a short fermentation run for Ben Romick, but the longer one is fairly comparable to Springbank's fermentation times. Um, they both use wooden washbacks. All these things lend into uh, their spirits actually kind of having a lot of similarities. So I think it's a great replacement. Uh, replacement, again, we can't replace it. Alternative, alternative to Springbank. However, you want to amp this up a little bit, you can go ahead and uh, try the 15-year-old Ben Romick uh, as a counterpart to the 15-year-old Springbank. Um, Adam from the Dram Association in Victoria here in British Columbia, uh, he commented and he might have said it in his video covering Ben Romick as well. The Ben Romick range is really a really good foil for the Springbank range, the 10 versus the 10. The Springbank 15 to the Ben Romick 15. Uh, the Springbank 15 typically leans a bit more on the sherry. Um, I find the same when I've had samples of this in the past. I haven't cracked into it. 
You have the um, Contrasts edition for Ben Romick, uh, the peat smoke Contrasts, uh, which is heavier peat, which is a lot like the long row non-age statement from Springbank. You also have uh, the uh, organic, Contrasts organic from Ben Romick, which is a lot like Hazelburn. Um, and speaking of heavily peated Benromic mirroring, lo mirroring long row, if you find any of these cast strength options or a Benromic single cask like this one from Kensington Wine Market in Calgary, 18 year old ex bourbon cask, first fill ex bourbon cask, this is like long row 18, uh, but cast strength. It's phenomenal. Uh, really, really solid option to get your spring bank fix without having to source spring bank. Check out Ben Romick to get your spring bank fix when you can't get it. Second on the list is going to be another Speyside single malt scotch whiskey. It's Craig Allocky 13 year old single malt scotch whiskey. Now also being a, an age statement in the double digits at least, 13 years old, 46% alcohol. That's a good sign, just like the spring bank. It is non-chill filtered don't know if it's natural color. So it's almost all the way there to an integrity malt, um, the type that Ralphie would uh, tell us to look for. Um, now, similar to Springbank Distillery, uh, Craig Alke uses worm tubs, uh, which is something that's rather uncommon these days. This results in a heavier spirit, a weightier spirit, um, and also kind of a meatier uh, spirit. It oftentimes gets compared to Mortlock for that reason, which is also another worm tub uh, distillery. Its um, cask makeup is ex bourbon and sherry casks. So, again, similar to Springbank. Um, it uses, strangely enough, an oil fired heater to dry uh, the barley, which is unpeated, but you still kind of get this like smoky and sulfuric note. Uh, deliberate sulfuric note, not an off note, but something that are actually trying to create as a profile for this whiskey. It's spirity, it's malt forward, it's funky, it's fruity, it's meaty. Um, it is, and it's, it, it's got a certain minerality to it as well. Uh, all things that I think uh, at one point or another with certain batches of Springbank, you can correlate with Springbank. Uh, so I think Craig Alke 13 is a top notch candidate uh, for an alternative to Springbank 10. Might be worth checking out. Next up on our list is a bottle I almost don't want to put on the list because it's getting hard to find. Uh, I can still get it where I live. Um, if I need a replacement bottle, it's there for me. But I know that won't always be the case. And that bottle is from Glengyle Distillery and it is Kilcairn, 12 year old, Campbelltown single malt scotch whiskey. Now this is made by uh, the same team that makes Springbank. Uh, they take three months of the year off to go down the street to Glengyle. They use the same barley uh, that they use at Springbank. They're using a lot of the same methods. They make it um, in a very similar fashion and it's bottled in a very similar way. Non-chill filtered, natural color, um, it's a beautiful whiskey. It's 70% ex bourbon, is 30% sherry. Um, it's peated to 15 ppm. Uh, so, again, moderately peated, much like Springbank. Good age statement on it. And the uh, flavor profile it's, uh, it's sweet, it's coastal, uh, it's salty, it's very fruity. You get pears and melon. You get that Campbelltown funk in there, um, some citrus and light peat smoke. A really good comparable, a really good alternative, and just a tad lighter than Springbank 10. But like I said, it's getting hard to find. In the UK, it sells out fairly quickly, as far as I uh, am aware, and it's starting to go higher in price here and harder to find. But if it's available where you are, it's definitely worth uh, taking a shot at it as an alternative to Springbank 10. Kilcarran 12, it's a great bottle. Before we get to the last bottle on this list, I want to talk about a quick honorable mention. And it's an honorable mention because it's not an exact uh, alternative to Springbank. It's, it's a bottle that casts strength. And so for that reason, uh, I think it's just a, it's, its own beast, but it shares some similarities in profile uh, to Springbank 10. 
And that whiskey I'm talking about is Glen Scotia Victoriana Castring Single Malt Campbelltown Whiskey. Now, this has been talked about a lot on the internet. I've talked about it a lot. So I'm gonna try and go through very quickly, but it is from the other Campbelltown Distillery. Um, a Dramface article written by Doogie Crystal referred to it as the third nipple of Campbelltown Distilleries. Um, seems like an apt description to me because people always talk about Springbank, they talk about Glen Gyle, they seem to forget about Glen Scotia. And the profile on this whiskey, very lightly peated, um, it has uh, a lot of dessert notes, but it has a lot of fruit to it as well, and it definitely has uh, a bit of Campbelltown funk in it. Well worth a look. It's a delicious whiskey. It's from the same town. Um, it's worth it's worth a shot, honestly. It, times are getting tough. We're getting desperate to find something to uh, to um, stand in for this bottle. Victoria is a great option. Last on our list of alternatives, the Springbank 10 um, is coming up next. I really appreciate you sticking around to the end of the list. It means a lot to me. And this bottle isn't, it isn't specifically this bottle that I'm telling you to go out and get, but it's more directing you towards this style of whiskey. And this is by independent bottler A.D. Rattray, and it's actually Cask Orkney 18 year old single malt scotch whiskey. Now what this is, is independently bottled, 100% ex-bourbon Highland Park uh, single malt scotch whiskey. Uh, it's from the island of Orkney, as you can tell by the label. It's uh, again, non-chill filtered, natural color, it's bottled right. And this 100% ex-bourbon backdrop for this uh, distillate uh, really allows certain characteristics to shine. Certain characteristics that are very comparable um, to the Springbank character, to even Ben Romick's character, actually. So it's it's lightly peated. It has a, a maritime uh, sort of uh, salty uh, note to it. Wisps of smoke, citrus. Um, it's a little dirty, it's a little earthy, but it's still fruity too. Um, this bourbon backdrop really allows that earthiness, that dirtiness to come through. And that allows it to kind of come across a bit funky. Again, not the same as Campbelltown funk, but there's some sort of funk going on there. It's really enjoyable, and this particular bottle, if you add just a couple drops of water, it's actually really fantastic. Um, so 100% ex-bourbon cask, Highland Park. It's a really good alternative. Now, I remember reading a quote, I think from a Dave Broom book, and I, I couldn't find it, so if I'm misquoting, I'm sorry. But to my knowledge, uh, from this quote, um, Highland Park isn't actually filling ex-bourbon casks anymore. The last time they filled ex-bourbon casks, I believe, was in 2003. If you're finding independent bottlers uh, that are more recent than 2003 for distillate date, um, like the uh, Scotch Malt Whiskey to Society bottlings, um, each one I've looked at has been actually re-racked into an ex-bourbon cask uh, from whatever it was originally filled into. Um, so it's something that's slowly disappearing, but you can still get it out there. And it's a really good alternative to the Springbank uh, 10. Um, I can't say enough good about this whiskey. I mean, I'm just about through the bottle. That says enough right there. Thank you guys for sticking with me to the end of this list. It's not an exhaustive list. There aren't, aren't, these aren't all the options out there. These are just some of the ones that I'm most familiar with. I've heard lots of talk about Loch Lomond 12 being a great alternative. And Nevis 10, which is impossible to get in my market. Um, but I know from experience, Ben Nevis can definitely have some funk to it and a dirtier side. Same with Edrudauer. Um, if it's not slathered in sherry, I'm sure it's uh, closer to the Springbank profile too. Glengarry, um, Anok, there's a ton of options out there. So if you have a different alternative to Springbank that you like to go to instead of the ones I mentioned, Comment down below, what is your favorite alternative to Springbank 10? Or do, do you just have so much Springbank 10 that you don't even have to think about alternatives? That's a possibility too. Either way, thanks for sticking around to the end of this video. If you can go ahead and like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for joining me today, guys. Slancha.